I would really, really discourage that from happening. I'll tell you why. Welcome back to Ask Dr. Hillary. Coronavirus explained with Britain's most trusted TV doctor. And while well, Dr. Hillary, over the weekend, what an occurrence within government. Boris Johnson has tested positive for COVID-19, as has Matt Hancock, the Health Secretary, the Scottish Secretary, Alistair Jack is in self-isolation, and we've just learned today, so is Dominic Cummings, uh, Boris Johnson's arguably most important advisor now working from home like so many of us. So does this mean that the government officials didn't actually follow their own advice properly? I, I think they were so inundated and, uh, with, and bombarded by the, the news coming in and the importance of getting the public health messages out that they just uh, lost sight of the fact that they are human beings as well. Um, and we saw them not quite socially distancing themselves enough when they were giving their updates and their conferences. And, and this is the consequence. And what it shows is that whilst people are busy and they take their, their uh, eye off the ball, that um, they're exposed to this virus, which is no respecter of anybody, whether they're top politicians, prime ministers, celebrities, and even monarchy. Uh, we know that this virus um, you know, attacks human beings. And the closer you are in proximity to other people, the more likely you are to get it. So here we are uh, with members of the cabinet having sort of worked in the same room, members of COBRA, um, it, it has repercussions and hopefully they'll all recover quickly and get back to, to working um, when they're out of self-isolation. But um, you know, hopefully they will um, not have uh, anything more than a mild to moderate uh, illness and get back on the job. Fingers crossed. Now, we're exactly a week on from lockdown. When should we start seeing the results? And also, do you believe all of this talk from the Deputy Chief Medical Officer that we might be having to do this in six months. What we must remember is that lockdown is the initial stage. We've got to be really patient. Uh, lockdown means that we have uh, seen that we are on the same trajectory as other European countries where they've had a very high number of cases and uh, quite a severe death rate. And therefore, um, we can expect, looking at all the data, and the virus is not gonna behave any differently in the UK as it does ev everywhere else, uh, that we, we must expect to lock down for uh, at least three weeks and then review it. And I think what we'll see is a, is a peak in about two or three weeks with many, many more cases, which perhaps will make people aware of the risks that they run by not socially distancing and, and, and the damage that they could do to healthcare professionals and the NHS generally. And I think people will say in three weeks, well, we are prepared to listen to the advice. And if it means staying at home for a lot longer, um, then so be it. And I personally believe that that will be the case, that we get used to uh, staying at home and we will just have to endure that a bit longer because the risks of uh, ignoring the advice is that we all go out again, uh, we don't socially distance and we see a, another peak just after the last one, which will you know, severely strain the NHS to say the least. So I think, yes, personally, lockdown will last a lot longer but that's something we should welcome because it protects us. It protects us, it protects the staff that look after us if we become sick, and it protects the NHS. So Dr. Hillary is here every weekday on The Sun's YouTube channel and my talk radio drive time show, us answering your questions. We have had thousands of them come in over the past few days, so do keep on sending them in at thesun.co.uk forward slash Dr. Hillary or talk radio's website as well. Or you can just use the hashtag ask Dr. Hillary. But let's kick off with question one, Hills, from Jean Norfolk, who says, I'm isolating at home. The only place I go out is in the garden to hang washing. Is there any danger of catching COVID-19 from the air we breathe outside? No, fresh air is really good. It's to be encouraged. People are encouraged to be taking one form of exercise for a short period of time every day. The fresh air um, is, is healthy because not only does the ultraviolet light help to kill the virus, but fresh air does not carry the virus. If you're within, you know, beyond two meters from anybody else, the virus is, 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 is blown away and it, it dies quickly. So fresh air is good. In your garden, absolutely fine. On your balcony, absolutely fine. Stacey English is on video today. Hi, Dr. Hillary. I live alone with my two-year-old. If I was to get sick, who would look after him and vice versa? 
And of course, this is of concern to any single parent, uh, anybody looking after uh, a young dependent. And, and of course, uh, she'll be worried and concerned just like many other people. So if she becomes sick, um, then because they're in the same household, they, they self-isolate, uh, they go into quarantine for 14 days, and hopefully um, she won't be too bad. Uh, she will use all the usual remedies of bed rest, if necessary, fluids, paracetamol. Um, and hopefully she'll recover quickly. Now, if she becomes more sick and has to go into hospital, then clearly somebody has to look after her two-year-old. That could be a neighbor, it could be a friend, it could be a relative, um, somebody that can keep the child safe until she's better and comes out of hospital. Uh, and, and if there's nobody like that about, then clearly social services can help. They will assist, they will do anything necessary to look after um, that young person until she's better. And the next question, an important one for me, this from Marilyn Beer. She says, my mum is 91. My question is, how long could the virus be alive on a newspaper if transferred from the hand of the person delivering it? She is desperate to have her paper, but I don't want to risk her health. Well, newspapers are important. They're a great source of information and people need to be updated daily at the moment. So the good news is that the virus um, doesn't live a, at all very long on paper and on cardboard. It tends to be absorbed and killed um, on those surfaces, unlike hard surfaces like plastic or metal. So even suppose the virus was on the surface of the newspaper, which is unlikely, it wouldn't last more than a few minutes, uh, certainly not even an hour. Uh, and if, like everything else you touch, as long as you're washing your hands on a frequent uh, basis, then you're going to minimise your risk. There is no such thing as no risk, but reading newspapers is, is a tiny risk, but an important thing for us to continue to do. Well, that's great news. And of course, Dr. Hillary has his column every day in the Sun newspaper right now, so even more reason to keep buying them. An important medical question from Martin Wheatcroft, who says, are you infectious after recovering from COVID-19 and can you re-catch it? The thing to realise is that once you feel completely better, you've got your energy back and all your symptoms have gone, barring the cough, you're probably fine to go back to work uh, and carry on uh, the activities that, as long as you follow the guidelines, after three to four days uh, of that recovery. Uh, what we talk about in terms of viral persistence is that you're shedding the virus still when you're sick, but after three to four days of feeling completely well, it's thought that the virus is gone, you're not shedding, and you can carry on as normal. The second part of that question, uh, remind me, Dan, was can you get it again? Can you recatch it? it? Uh, we hope not. It's very unlikely. Usually when someone's had COVID-19 or any other virus for that matter, respiratory virus, you build up an immunity after 10 to 14 days, and that immunity uh, it will last for a considerable amount of time. How long? We don't know yet because this is a new virus. It's only been around yeah. four months. We will have antibody testing that will show how long it lasts quite soon. Uh, but until then, we're hoping that you'll be immune for several weeks at least. Linda Johnson. Linda, hope you're OK. She's had COVID-19 for two weeks and she asks this. I'm starting to recover, but I still get extremely out of breath from simple things like having a shower or washing up. I would like to know what exercises I can do to help me recover from my lung function. At this stage, I'm sure there are a lot of people in my position who need some advice on what to do as they come out the other side of this awful illness. A lot of people who've had COVID-19 say that it takes them a long time to get rid of the fatigue, to get their energy back uh, and to start to feel really normal again. This is a, a virus that attacks the lungs predominantly. It causes what we think is fibrosis, so almost like a, a stiffening and a scarring of the lungs. So the breathlessness can last some time and in some people who have it severely, it could be permanent. So I think the thing to do is to do respiratory exercises, no kind of physical workouts at the moment because you won't be able to cope with that very easily. It's doing a little bit more each day. So it will start with just a walk around the house, up and down the stairs, perhaps a walk around the garden if you're lucky enough to have one, just increasing it bit by bit, not getting too breathless. Um, so just doing what you feel you can do, maybe for 15 minutes the first day, twice a day, maybe then for 20 minutes the following day. And you've got to work with your own parameters. So don't get too tired. Don't do it if it tires you out. 
just do a little bit and increase it each day. Karen Page has sent us this question next and she says, help, my mum is 91 with dementia in independent housing. How do I explain COVID-19 and care for her when she lives an hour and a half away? Is it safe to shower her and change her bedding? Well, it's within the guidance to go and see anyone who's vulnerable and needs care. Uh, and of course she, she does. Um, to try and explain it I think is tricky. Um, you could say that there's a nasty infection circulating. Most people will still remember what flu is like. So it's a kind of flu. Uh, we know it's much worse, but I think that would be the way to describe it. So she, th to explain that she needs to stay home in her independent uh, lodgings and, uh, and take every precaution, that's the first thing. But yes, she should go, she can shower her, she can um, help her with uh, washing. Uh, because who else is going to and that's a necessary function but of course to keep as much social distance as possible wash hands use hand sanitizer uh, and um, and she's doing a good job that somebody has to do good question here from caroline tipton a lot of my friends have been asking this one hillary are private house cleaners still allowed to work no um i have cancelled uh, uh, my cleaner uh, to the great regret of <laughs> my whole household but you know, a cleaner is bringing in the virus potentially on their hands, uh, uh, in their breath, uh, on their clothes, even on their cleaning products. You'd think that you know the cleaners would be extra careful, and they are. But nevertheless, it's a, it's a personal, face-to-face -face contact that you don't need. And of course, they'd have visited lots of other households if they were still cleaning. So, you know, we've just got to be sensible about this. And no person needs to visit your home unless it's absolutely necessary. And I'm afraid cleaning is not necessary and actually you've got time on your hands do the cleaning yourself so Caroline you've been told do it yourself uh, Sam Halford with the next question here can my son and his family move into our home if they struggle financially with private rent and have no work I would really really discourage that from happening uh, I'll tell you why um, first of all on the financial side uh, the, the rent there's going to be a rent holiday for many people a lot of people don't need to pay their rent right now if they've got no income coming in and I think the government have already said that there'll be a moratorium on rent whilst people ha ha have not got the job to go to that's the first thing so financially they shouldn't be too worried um, in terms of um, coming to stay we don't want households mixing um, and, it, and if they all come to that other household, they're going to potentially bring the virus and expose uh, you know, the people who, who uh, were going to host them to a, a greater risk. So no, they should stay put. They shouldn't travel between the homes. We need as little traveling between households as possible. And it's harsh and it's inconvenient, but they can communicate on the phone, they can communicate on the internet, and that's the way it should be. And finally today, Steve Edwards has messaged to say, I have been asked to pick people up and take them to work. Is this legal? Well, apart from the legality, is it moral? No, it's not. If you think about it, a car is an enclosed space. You're within two metres of, of the person who's driving uh, and, and the passenger. Um, and the more passengers a driver picks up, the more exposure there is in close contact. This is not socially distancing. So I don't know the role of the person who's been asked to do the driving, but even if they were a key worker, it would be best if each individual who was a key worker were driving themselves and not using public transport. Obviously, if they can't drive themselves, they're still, uh, the guidance is to, to use public transport, but socially distance as much as possible. But people driving other people on a regular basis is, is not a good idea at all. Thank you so much for all of your questions today. They have been brilliant. We are getting thousands of them. So Dr. Hillary will be back tomorrow for another edition of Ask Dr. Hillary Coronavirus Explained.